Welcome to another show of this week. The UN mission on Saturday, March 5th, organized a cross-cultural event dubbed On Miss Wild Flavors. To enhance mutual understanding and partnership between UNMIS and the South Sudanese people. The mission on Saturday, March 5th, organized a cross-cultural event dubbed UNMIS Wild Flavors. The event, held at Nyokoron Cultural Center in Juba, was jointly organized with the South Sudan Means of Culture, Youth and Sports. The Deputy Special Representative of the Secretary General Political, Mustafa Somare, described the event as true example of the unity in diversity, which the UN stands for. On this occasion, as we celebrate the world flavors for our diverse cultures, let us also remember that irrespective of our backgrounds, we are all united in purpose for a peaceful South Sudan. And this is indeed the very reason we are gathered here today, to show our unwearying support to the people of South Sudan as they pursue lasting peace. Reiterating the mission's commitment as South Sudan's partner for peace, Mr. Somare stressed the importance of standing together for peace and security in the country. As Amis, our motto says it all, your partner, for peace. And as your partner for peace, we also recognize that it is only when we stand united in our cause for peace and security in South Sudan that we begin to appreciate that unity is strength and strong communities and nations are built through respect for humanity, diversity, and tolerance. UNMIS Force Commander Lieutenant General Johannes Tesfamariam say the event was vital in showing that the UN military was involved in a lot more than medical and veterinary camps across the country. Force Commander Lieutenant General Johannes added that UNMIS present is as part of the mandate and as partner for peace and support the process of the peace agreement and the people of South Sudan. The UNMIS military contingents will continue to do everything to implement the cross country mandate to protect civilians and support the people of South Sudan in all the mandated tasks. And I'm confident that together we shall make it a better place to live in. Noting the role played by different military contingents in assisting to improve road conditions, Lieutenant General Tasfamariam said these were helpful not only to the mission in carrying out its mandate, but also to the South Sudanese. The event features various UNMI sections explaining their work, as well as different military contingents presenting their cultural performances and serving food from their home countries. The South Sudanese troop also performed dances from various tribes across South Sudan, while another group also served food from Upper Nile, Baragazal, and Equatoria. <laughs> It is time of the year where we celebrate International Women's Day. Our next story focuses on the roundtable discussions organized by United Nations in collaboration with the government of South Sudan on the occasion of International Women's Day that was held in Juba. A roundtable discussion organized by United Nations Mission in South Sudan in collaboration with the government of South Sudan on the occasion of International Women's Day was held in Juba today, 7th of March 2016. In her keynote opening, Helen Margaret Lodge, Special Representative of the Secretary General, United Nations Mission in South Sudan said earlier marriages affect millions of girls and it impacts directly their development prospects and access to education. Practice of early marriage prevails in South Sudan 
but also in many other parts of the world. Early marriage affects millions of girls and it impacts directly the, and it impacts directly their development prospects and access to education. Every year, an estimated 15 million girls marry before the age of 18, and that's the equivalent to one every two seconds. The SRSG call on participants to work together to close the gender gap. Let us continue to work together to close the gender gap. Let's make sure that girls have access to education. Let us discourage early marriage of children. By addressing these issues with de determination and vigilance, not only will the individual girls be able to get a better future. In her role as special representative, Helen Margaret Lodge emphasized the importance of female peacekeepers, including in uniform. The presence of female peacekeepers make actual difference on the ground, not only by enhancing security and safety for local communities, but also by enabling our mission to be more approachable to the most vulnerable groups of society. Peace and development is for the benefit of women as well as men. At the end, Margaret Lodge say that South Sudanese need lasting peace. We need lasting peace in South Sudan to enable girls in this country to reach their full potential and exercise their right as children and as women. During our weekly press conference, Ms. Ezedua, the country representative of UN Women, spoke, among other things, of early child marriage. UN Women Country Representative Izadua Bridge say that child marriage will be banned in South Sudan by 2030. Speaking to reporters at a press briefing in Juba, she announced that President Salva Kiir Mayardit has pledged to end child marriage by 2030. It is our pleasure to announce to you that His Excellency President Salva Kiir, on behalf of himself and the government of South Sudan, pledged to end child marriage by 2030. She added that everyone needs to strengthen women and their participation in social, economic and a political development. Since progress for gender parity is moving at a slow pace, women, men, boys and girls, by this theme, pledge to take concrete steps to assist in achieving gender parity quickly. This can be done by supporting women and girls achieve their ambitions. The call for gender balanced leadership, value and respect diversity, and for developing more inclusive cultures. The theme calls for everyone to be leaders in their own spheres of influence and commit to take pragmatic action to accelerate gender parity. Zedua added that decades of conflict coupled within the crisis in 2013 have caused social economic destructions in women's lives and exposed them to rape, sexual and gender-based violence. The decades of conflict coupled with the crisis in 2013 have caused socioeconomic disruption in women's lives, increased their burden of trying to salvage families, exposed them to rapes and other types of sexual and gender-based violence, also exposed them to extreme poverty, displacements, and lack of protection that were not present before the aggravated conflict. Women and girls are more marginalized as they cannot access schools and hospitals. They face the burden of health needs they have psychosocial challenges and shortage of food. At the end, Zedua said, in line with the global theme, the national theme for this year, International Women's Day, is South Sudanese pledge to end early child marriage. With the early child marriage, girls are denied the right to education. Without education, they remain unskilled and access to opportunity for sustainable livelihoods and political participation is reduced, thereby increasing or retaining the gender gap. Welcome back. We now go to Malakal, where Ellen, Margaret Lodge, Special Representative of the Secretary General, United Nations Mission in South Sudan, visit protection of civilian side. 
The UN Secretary General Special Representative for South Sudan, Helen Margaret Lodge, on Tuesday, March 8th, reiterated the UN's commitment to protection of a civilian in the world's youngest country. The UN envoy made the remarks while visiting Malakal, a city in the northern eastern part of South Sudan, to assess the situation there and to meet with the parties on the ground, including community leaders within the protection of civilian site Malakal town. She stated she came to Malakal to see the situation on the ground and understand how best to move forward on all fronts, such as security, humanitarian assistance and inter-communal dialogue. When the incidents in Malakal happened, many people lost their life and many were injured during the uh, uh, clashes in the PUC side. So I wanted to come and pay my respect, but also to discuss how we can look forward and avoid similar incidents happening in the future. The SRSG visited the protection of civilian site and met with men and women from the elders, community leaders, and youth representatives. Today is International Women's Day and what I've seen up here in Malakal, not only in the camp but also in the town, underlines the importance of making sure that women take place, uh, get an opportunity to take part in developing society, that girls get to go to school, that they get to contribute to the development of the country. The SRG told community representative that UNMIS and partners will continue to engage with the local authorities in Malakal to restore calm and resolve differences through dialogue. SRSG Lodge also met with the internally displaced persons, IDPs, in Malakal town who left the POC site in February. We leave you with our usual voices of peace this week. We dedicate this segment to voices from South Sudanese women who highlight aspects of South Sudan they won. Goodbye for now. We hope you join us next week. We start by building peace. Peace in our homes, peace with neighbors, peace with the working mates, peace in the church, peace everywhere. Once we obtain this peace, then we shall prosper. Women are sending out a very strong voice, but we need peace. Enough is enough. And for us to give hope to our children, to our generation, to our leaders of tomorrow, we should have peace. Whoever has taken gun must now say, let us take peace a priority. Let us take peace as a remedy to everything.